I've been playing football manager in its various forms for more than, I don't know, close to 30 years now. And I can tell you one thing. This edition of football manager, there are certain things we are almost, you know, we're forced to do because it's so important to the game. We can't ignore it anymore. In previous editions of Football Manager, if a player was suspected of, you know, twisting his arm the wrong way, you could play him until the 90th minute without fear of him turning in a bad performance. Things have changed on Football Manager 23 big time, but this we already knew of and I've been alluding to it on my live streams. You know on my live streams, I'm always making key substitution changes in the 60th minute. In this game, I was managing Burnmouth. And uh, we were three goals down to Man City in the first half. But the thing is, I approached this game very differently. I kept my best players on the bench. And then in the 60th minute, I made four very important substitutions in key areas of my tactic. And as a result of that, we came back, scored three goals in the second half, and we flipped the script. The most important thing I've noticed on Football Manager is that you need to understand your own tactical system. Sometimes I take off players who might be having an eight and they're playing in a central position in my 4-4-2. If it's one of the ball-winning midfielders, he might be having a really good game. But come the 60th minute mark, it doesn't matter if he's got an 8 or 10, he's got 3 goals or 2 goals, I take him off. Yes, because though he forms part of a partnership in midfield where I need them to control the center. The moment they become tired or they draw a yellow card, that's when sides start making mistakes and it's no different with our team because we might concede goals in the middle and i've noticed this since alpha and i've been screaming at my friends and telling them guys it's more important to make those substitution changes than it is about worry getting worried about players with poor ratings when you're playing football manager you need to look at your own tactic figure out where it's important for you to keep control so if it's a 4-3-3 that you're playing with two central midfielders and one dm then those two central midfielders, they need to get changed in the 60th minute. Then if you're playing a 4-4-2 diamond or even a 4-3-1-2, your wing backs need to be subbed in the 60th minute. And maybe one of those side midfielders because you need those side midfielders helping you protect the flanks. These are important substitutions that you will need to start making once you hit the 60th minute mark. And for some strange reason, when you make those changes, those substitutes may get involved in scoring you another goal. Yes. Last season, everybody was complaining about how the game pressing was too strong. Yeah, you could play with 11 players, the game press, win the game. Yeah. This season, yeah, you need substitutes to come on and do the job for you. But it's not such a big deal because for some strange reason, the AI doesn't really play the substitution game very well. And it's a bit of an unfair advantage for humans. Yeah. I mean, looking at the AI, sometimes the AI makes substitutions in the 80th minute, 10 minutes to go. I mean, it's a bit late, but you might want to be careful if you're still trying to score even more goals at that point. The substitution strategy is not a bad move, but there's something else that you should be aware of. Players getting jaded. Now, the thing about football manager is this. If you've not pushed your players in preseason, then there's a strong possibility that some of your players are going to get jaded towards the tail end of the season. Why is this the case? The thing here is this. These players have not been playing that many games. It's because we didn't have an aggressive preseason. When it comes to preseason, you absolutely need to fatigue them out in the first two weeks at least. So when you go into your calendar and you're going to training, there are two ways you can do this. You can create your own preseason schedule or you can just come in here preseason. You will see heavy early. Pick one of these. Make sure they do this for the first week. In the second week, you can you might have preseason matches, have two matches, but then you're pushing them anyway. So you, what you're going to be doing is you're pushing these players so that they get fatigued. This is very important. You want to be pushing them as hard as you can. Because when you push your players in preseason, you are basically setting their fatigue level up. And you're, they're getting very, very fatigued. You're making them used to it. You're, you're, you're building their fitness levels up so that they can keep those, maintain those fitness levels longer for the entire season. When you don't do that, you will normally see your players getting jaded and in need of rest at important times during the season. So it's going to be very important for you to set your preseason up right. Have a aggressive preseason where your players get fatigued out. 
and play at least six to seven preseason matches so that you can get them familiar with your tactical system. This one save I let the ass man do training. And um, he was in charge of preseason as well. We didn't really push the team. We did play a lot of preseason friendlies, but it wasn't enough. So I left him do all the preseason, but the players got off to a reasonably good start. But then towards this part of the season, I couldn't you know, get most of my players finishing matches without having to sub them. Our substitution strategy went out of the window because important key players were in need of rest. And yeah, we're struggling at the moment because we didn't have a good preseason. Well, the next time you play football manager, keep these two things in mind. I hope you enjoyed today's video and you found it useful. Meanwhile, you guys stay safe, take care of each other. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.